support one another. We talk all that motherfucking shit on the internet or on TV about how black people need to stick together and start supporting one another. But when we do get our own businesses, you motherfuckers don't do nothing but complain. This shit costs too fucking much. You gonna say that shit to Gucci? You gonna say a motherfucking thing about that when you go in there in Gucci. You look at that shit, they say shit, say 1500, 2000, you spend that shit. You bring your ass over to my motherfucking shop and I ask you to spend $300. Damn, that's too much. Can I get a discount? Never. You gonna ask them for no fucking discount? Don't ask me for no fucking discount. Black ownership, my ass. Y'all gonna support shit. All y'all do is lie and fucking complain. I started my little old motherfucking tie business. Guess what? Y'all didn't even come over and get y'all raggedy ass tie fixed to y'all. Now y'all went over there. So fuck y'all. Black ownership, my ass. I'm supporting everybody. Fuck all that black ownership. I'm supporting everybody. Trash motherfuckers. Go. Everybody give it up for DJ Drama, everybody. Drama, what's up, baby? What's up, man? I like the set. Hey, I appreciate it. You know, we're trying to move up in the world a little bit. Yeah, this is fancy. Everybody's going to pop out of this, right? Nah, nah. I think if I get a midget stripper will come out of there one day and scare the shit out of somebody. That'd be fire. Yeah, that'd be fire. So how things been going on these days, bro? Man, things are great, man. I've been moving and grooving, you know. Got a new album on the way. Most definitely. Been running in a successful record label. Gangsta Grills has had a resurgence. Yes, it is. You know, life is grand. I I, I have no complaints. Oh, definitely. Uh, you watched the Super Bowl this year? Uh, not only did I watch it, I was there at the Super Bowl. You know, originally I'm from Philly, so I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. So how you feel about that? It's a tough loss. It was definitely a tough loss. It was a great game. Um, you know, Andy Reid is smart as shit. You know, we got and that one. That is shit too. That don't only that. Yeah, I mean, you can put that in there. You know, you, he. We got a call that didn't go our way, um, but hold on, hold on. so so you felt like it shouldn't have been called. That's what you said. It was holding, but you feel like I mean, you get sent because you a fan. You had money on the game. I don't bet on my team. I didn't. Okay, I don't okay. have no money on the game, so I didn't bet on my team. But I definitely thought we was gonna bring it all the way, especially the type of season we had. But you know, salute to Patrick Mahomes. Salute to the Chiefs. You know, they did their thing, and it, it was a very competitive game. So you know. At least, you know what I mean? It wasn't no blowout, you know nah. what I'm saying? How, how you, speaking of that, you at the Super Bowl, like you said, how, how, how did you feel about Rihanna on Super Bowl performance? I thought it was dope, you know? I mean, I think it reminded uh, all of us how many fucking hits she got, you know? I think she's probably the first artist to perform pregnant during a Super Bowl, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, You know, so, I mean, that was a lot on her plate. You know, or in, in her belly to be performing. Um, <laughs> she did her thing, though. You know, uh, yeah, she did her thing. Yeah, she was getting a lot of backlash. Yeah, what you what you think? I didn't like this. I liked. I loved it. I loved that she was up there performing pregnant. I didn't like the fact that a lot of people was bashing her when they didn't know she was pregnant. Oh, right, she right, got right. Her stomach and yeah. my baby mama was wondering, look at her stomach. You ain't even pregnant and got a motherfucking stomach. <laughs> so how you gonna talk about Riri like that? <laughs> like I just didn't like that part. Then I seen someone Trump was even. Oh yeah, I seen that. He talking about the worst, worst Super Bowl performance ever. So I'm like, get out of here with that. Trash. Yeah, trash. All right, Trump got to get off the gas with that bullshit. Yeah, nah. Salute to Rihanna. That was that was dope. So you say you got an album coming? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, 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 what goes behind that, man? DJ Drama album. Like, what's the process of it? You just um, wake up and like, man, I'm gonna make an album, or you wake up like, the streets need me. You know, I haven't. This is my first like like studio album and in, in, I think it's been about six years. Um, and I kind of, you know, just got back into mold. You know, I've been doing a lot of, you know, on the executive side of things, running the label with the success of Uzi and Jack and, yeah. and, and things. And then, you know, I, as I, I think about in, in 21, um, the year I'm, I'm speaking of, you know, I, I did the Tyler Call Me If You Get Lost. Yeah. And then we wound up winning a, winning a Grammy for that. And I just kind of got back into this mode, you know, I mean, like, like the Gangsta Grills brand was, ha ha had this resurgence, you know, and I, I definitely uh, uh, salute to Tyler for that. And, yeah. you know, I just, I, I got back in the field of like wanting to put some records together. So 
I started putting some records together. You know, I put a record out uh, called Forever with uh, Jim Jones, Fabulous, oh. uh, Benny the Butcher. Oh. And then, you know, uh, last at the end of last year, I put this record out with Jeezy called I Ain't Gonna Hold You, which led up to Into Snowfall. So. Bye. You know, I just, I just was like, you know, I, I, I haven't put an album out in a minute, and I, and I got that feel. I was like, you know, I was excited about, you know, where, where I was musically and, and what have you. And, and it's not an easy task. You know, a lot of people ask, like, like for DJs and producers, like, you know, what, it, what actually do we do? Or, you know, what I'm saying, like, when you put an album together, and it's like, it's like, it's like a blank canvas, and having to paint that picture and using a lot of different colors and to tell your story. You know, what I'm saying. So this album is called "I'm Really Like That." You know, and just for me, it's like. You know, I've been in the game like 20 years now, bless and you, bless you know, I, I've, I've done a lot for the culture. You know, I've, I've, um, I've, um, I've, I've, I've put on in, in any way possible. You know, from so many different angles of, of hip hop, and and worked with so many people, and and really taken you know the Gangsta Grills brand, which in my opinion is the most important mixtape series of all time. You know, and just for me, even outside of that, just on an album perspective, it's like, um, yeah, I'm in that mode. Like, you know, I'm here to tell the world. Like, you know, after 20 years and and still being this relevant and, and being hotter than ever, like. I'm really like that. Like I really do this. So is you in it for the sales, or you look at it like different? Because a lot of time albums be jamming, mm -hmm. but they gonna do the sales. Yeah. So is you in it for the sales, or you in it for the reception of the people that that love drama? Yeah. Like, no, nah, it's always about it's always about the people and the reception of you know of of the body of work. You know, of course, everybody wants sales. You know, everybody would love to sell whatever number out the gate and you know be number one on billboard but i'm i'm not at that space in my career like you know i'm at the point where i just want to put out a, a good body of work you know that people respect and and people enjoy the music and ride to it most definitely you um how, how you ever had artists that you work with started beefing if so how did that make you feel artists that i've worked with started beefing yeah with and what and what's context Rap, like just like Context, like I've never say. been a part of any rap beef. So no, I'm right. saying you haven't been a part of rap beef, but friends that you don't work with on Gangster Grills before. I to, everybody's no. always happy around me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trash, 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 trash. So, so drummer, uh, have you ever been a sugar daddy? Um, have you ever bought some cat? Uh, yeah, I paid for something before. That's fair. Like just off the rip, or it's like hush. Like okay, we're gonna do what we do over here. Go that way. Man. I've I've done both. <laughs> <laughs> At least you being honest and real about because a lot of men pay for it, but they don't never want to admit that shit. Yeah, no. I mean, sometimes there's been a point where it's like you know that was in that context of that situation. It was like I wasn't, I didn't want to go on a date, and I didn't want to. Wasn't a lot of conversation to be had. It was just like. Let's get to it. Yeah. Like, you know what it is. I'm drumming, bitch. Like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I, w I didn't say that to her, but, you know. In your mind, yeah. yeah. Most definitely that. <laughs> <laughs> Trash. <laughs> oh, man, that shit crazy. You, man, drop, man, that shit, you drop some questions. I don't need that one. Oh, okay. I'm going to go to this one with All you. Right. Uh, like, how do you feel about the, um, the gun and thugger situation? Or would you ever do a gangster grills with Gunner? Knowing the perception that he has now, saying saying that he snitched. Would you Um uh, that's a tough one, you know? I mean, I still think there's a lot that we don't know. Um so I would probably have to to wait and see how it unfolds to really be able to like uh put myself in the position where we would do a project together you you know how you know how it's going he's home <laughs> you know you know what i'm saying you just being political about the shit you know how it's going he's home thug ain't yeah i don't think it's self-explanatory I, I, I don't think there's anybody that you know i mean my, my brand is very street orientated so you know it, it's it stands by a certain code um and people respect me for that so yeah, that. you know, I gotta, I gotta stick by that code. So I'm gonna ask you this: Why, why do you light skinned niggas be beefing? What you mean? Now I'm saying beefing like uh, it's a little something there at one time, once upon a time with you and uh, DJM. What was that? What, what was that about? <laughs> that was just a, that was like a, 
a miscommunication. A light skin miscommunication. What, okay. does, what does Charlemagne like to call it? He like to call us what waffle color Negroes. Yeah, oh. waffle color. Um, yeah, I mean, it made for a great episode of The Breakfast Club, though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Envy, that's my man. He was, he, you know, he was in his feelings at the time, but we were able to Ooh. to to hash it out right there. So and that's what I like. That's had, my man. Y'all hashed like, it out. Yeah, that's 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 my dog. That's my nigga. Most definitely. Have you ever been? Do you feel like light skinned niggas beef more than I do? Really? Yeah. Oh, my I God. really do. What you think? Y'all being biased. No, bro, y'all. Nah, y'all being biased. Bro, it's been a lot of light skinned beefs, bro. It's been a lot of just beef. black men on black men beef in general. <laughs> That's from generation to generation. Yeah, let's be real about it. Have you ever been caught up, man, with a chick? In what way? Have you ever got caught with your side chick? Like, have I been got caught cheating? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a good cheater. And what was that like? <laughs> Why? Your phone, the couch, was it your phone gave you away, or I'm you just, just I'm a lousy a, cheater? I'm not a good cheater. So, yeah, I, I stopped doing it. Oh, so you straightened you up now. You, you, you good. Yeah, I mean, I'm either in a committed relationship or, or I'm not. single. But the cheating shit, this, I'm going to get caught. So I just don't even do it anymore. <laughs> Give it up for that. <laughs> Give it up for that shit. You know, you know. It, it, it took me. It took me a lot of years to get here, though. You know, I'm, I'm about to be 45 this year. Blessings, blessings for yeah. that. You, uh, you watch. I know you watched the NBA All Star this year. I did. What did you think about the All Star game? Um, I was actually in the studio working, um, with a with a, a very uh dope project coming later this year that I can't talk about, but was pretty exciting. So I was I was kind of in and out of of watching it. Um, um. Uh, Tatum got MVP, right? Yeah. He got like 50 some points. 53, 55. 55 points. Was that the most ever? Yeah. Yeah. So that was crazy. Um, I like I like the fact that they did the like the last minute um, draft part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, it might make for a little bit of a sloppy game because they don't get a game plan together. But I feel like that brought some excitement to it and everything. That shit was trash, drunk. It was trash. You think so? Like I feel like they should go back to the East and the West. You do? Just like Kobe Bryant said, yeah. you know, us as fans, we want to see the best against the best. It still, it still is that though, no, right? No, motherfuckers out here playing games, bro. But, but at all, listen, any All Star game you go watch, for the majority of the time. So now th this one is a little different because they, everybody wins each quarter. Correct. So the majority of the quarter they're not playing no defense. Correct. And then, but the majority of All Star games they really don't start playing defense till the fourth quarter. But they didn't anyway. do it this year at all. They didn't play they, no none. That's the whole point. That's what everybody said. Yeah, I missed about. a lot of that. Yeah, they didn't do a motherfucking thing, drama. No defense. No, and I get it. We don't want to. Niggas get hurt. don't want to get hurt. But think about. And then think about Ron the, like hurt his hand or something. Yeah, but think about the fans who spend five to ten thousand dollars to come watch y'all motherfuckers and y'all gonna do nothing. Yeah. Like the NBA well, didn't change that. Fans shit. that spend five to ten thousand, those aren't the ones we should worry about. <laughs> <laughs> the fans that spend like a hundred to. Nah, uh, shit, five hundred to a thousand. No, we, 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 five, we should five separate that though. Like, we should separate that though, because money is money. It is, but if a nigga spending ten grand, like that means he's he ain't hurt. Yeah, he's okay. He'll be. He should be alright with the game, regardless. Because <laughs> that's a court, that's a court side seat. Most definitely, you know what I'm saying. So definitely. yeah, like that's not who we were. We worry about them people up in them rafters. That's like a five hundred dollar ticket. Correct. Maybe yeah. two hundred. Even if that, so but they still thing. don't change the fact that that shit was. Yeah, trash. but they never, they're never gonna play tough defense in an All Star game. It's no, always we, been like they that. used to. We all, we know that. All I'm saying is, this. name me an All Star game that they played tough defense. All like throughout the nineties, the one Kobe Bryant was in when he was living. All of the nineties and even in the beginning of two thousand and stuff, it was West versus East, and that meant something. I might have to go back and watch, but I still feel like niggas don't start playing defense on All Star game until the fourth quarter. But they didn't do it at all this year. That's what I'm talking about. So they, they didn't, didn't do, do it in the fourth quarter. All. Okay, yeah, no, nah, we got that shit has to change. Nah, I gotta change. It's too soft. Everybody friends. We we already know y'all rich. We get yeah. it. But God damn it, let's compete. Yeah, it might never be. Like it might never be like the nineties again. Nah, when it was like the trash tra 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 talk era. Like who's left in the NBA that's really, really, really a trash talker? Nobody but Draymond Green, really. Yeah, Draymond. And, um, Pat Bell, but he, yeah. but yep. he ain't. He woofing though. Yeah. So. They just, well, they, just, they need to make some change. So you think they need to go back to east to west? Most definitely go back to east to west. I ain't mad at that. I think that'll be good for the that'll be good for the culture. Yeah, I ain't mad at that. That that'll be that'll be fun.
Who you got winning the finals this year, though? Who you got? That's a good you question. You from Philly, so you should be a Sixer fan, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously I'm gonna go Sixers. Trash, 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 trash. I mean, we, you know, we looking good. You know, we definitely going to the playoffs. So, yeah, I do, we'll man. see. It would be an amazing year if we go to the finals because we went to the World Series. Lost. We went to. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Eagles went right. We went to the Super Bowl. Lost, lost, <laughs> trash. You see the tree? We we got there though. Yeah, I give you that. We got there. Uh, your favorite artist doing um so far? Who have you worked with on your gangster career that was your favorite so far? That's, that's that's I can't I can never answer that. I've I've worked with so many legendary people. Like I've done so many legendary projects. It's like it's impossible. Like I can never. What's a, okay? Can never okay. Say so, a favorite. So, so, what, so what's a session like with I, Lil Wayne? Incredible. I mean, he's he's like he's an alien. He's writing or is, is it in his mind? All, like we want to know. Is all, he all, he doesn't write nothing? Jeezy. He good. Pat Pen and Pat. Jeezy is like Jeezy is fun because he challenges me a lot. Like when it comes to my trash talk, like he's somebody that always like pushes me and really brings the best out of me. So when I go in and we do projects, like, you know, majority of the time, my first take or my first go, he's going to come back and be like, yo, I, I need you to, you can elevate, like you can go a little further. Like he, like even on Snowfall, he pushed me. Um, it's a song on there called Grammys. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I had lightly said something and he was like, yo, like, how are you going get on a song called Grammys after you just won one and not stunt. And I was like, damn, you're right. Like, so I had to go back and like really talk some shit. Like, you know, so, um, I mean, when, you, if you talk about those two guys, I definitely think a lot of the argument about what the best gangster grills is a lot of times it comes between trap or die right. and dedication to, to yeah. yeah. You ever cook up a hit and maybe send it to somebody like, boy, I got me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like competing wise. I guess other DJ like Khaled. You ever said something to Khaled and like, what you think about this? Do y'all or like send it to him? Yeah. Nah, I've never done that. Um, we actually just ran into each other. We saw each other at um, at the Grammys, um, and it was it was all love because you know recently just from the lot of the versus com combo and everything, like the media has kind of tried to like pit us against each other, yeah. and it's like. You know, as DJs, like, light skin, I get it. You know, <laughs> light skin DJs, like you know, we 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 do music out of the love. So, you know, we had a we had a dope moment and everything, and we had the good laughs. And you know, we go back like we we got so much history together. We both been doing this for so long, and <clears throat> you know, have had like um have have like you know both like been in each other's videos, yeah. DJ at each other's birthday parties and everything. So now you're going to put out something together, right? You're going to put out something together. Drama, that, that, that would DJ be fire. Khaled. You know, um, I think anything is possible. That should be trash. Do it by <laughs> oh, <wow>. yourself. <laughs> do it by yourself. It's gold. Just the way you do it. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, like one thing about it, you got to love that hip hop is a competitive sport. Mm -hmm. So we all, you know, we all motivate and and inspire and push each other, you know? So when somebody puts out something and that's fire it just makes you want to go back in and like you know be like all right I, you know what i mean i gotta get on my shit a gangster grill mixtape nobody talks about it no more it's like they forgot about it and it wasn't even with no rap or kelly that shit was so motherfucking hard don't turn your head about kills kill still that <laughs> nigga God, whatever we did whatever we did the, the but that gangster grill to me that shit was hard the I demo tape huh? it's called the demo tape demo tape yeah hard yeah that was a I good tape. With, you, had some, you had some bangers on there with him on that. Oh, nah, that was a good tape. Do you plan on working with any more R&B on, on Gangsta Grills? Um, so R&B kind of dead right now. Nah, nah, it's not dead. You know, SZA just did amazing. Oh, yeah, she, she's amazing. I just did a tape with this uh, artist named A. Illa, actually. I put out at the end of the year, and um, I put it out in December. It's, it's an R&B Gangsta Grills. It's pretty, it's, it's super fire. Mm -hmm. um, so people should check that out. Um, beyond that, do I have some R&B? You know, I'm, I'm down to work with everybody. You know, I love working with uh, uh it, with doing R&B mixtapes too, because it, it gives me a, a a different mode, like a different texture of, you know, how I can approach the tape. So, you know, I'm 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 open to 
to anything. You know? Even though this probably would never happen, but I would love to see a Jay Z Gangster Groove. Yeah, I, for some reason, I don't feel like that would ever happen. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that would be dope. But I think one of the things that's that's really dope about Gangster Grills is that a lot of times the majority of them are with artists that are not necessarily like ground level, but like right here before they get right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when they work with me, it's like, it's that it's, it's somewhat them over, of a stamp you and yeah you know those are some of my favorites like when i do tapes like like when i did like simba's project you know or icewear vezo yeah you know what i'm saying i just recently did cash doll you know dope, like dope, dope. tapes like that like you know and I, I love to work with like some of the biggest artists in the world as well but you know i think one thing about me is is and, and what people respect about me is like I've always kept my ear to the streets and yep. like my foundation is the streets. So right. when it comes to gangster grills, like, you know, I've I've done humongous tapes with humongous artists, but you know, it, it's something special about someone first hearing an artist on a gangster grills project and then becoming a believer and then seeing them, you know, I'd rather I'd rather do one with the next Jay Z than do one with Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? We we gonna have a Bubba Dub Gangsta Grill comedy album. Let's let's do that. Bubba Dub yeah, Gangsta Grill track. I did a I did a tape with Lil Duval. Okay. I did a tape with Cat Williams. Dope. Now it's time for Bubba Dub. Most definitely. You yeah, gotta get so, that trash talk gangsta yeah, grill. That's definitely a lane for it. Most definitely. <laughs> Besides, this shit better not be trash though. Never. Yeah. Never. Because if your shit is trash, I'm, like, I'm telling I'm you. I'm like oh, Tupac wow. in the studio. Wow. Okay. I'm like Pac. I'm a, I'm a lab rat. Yeah. Number five coming out. Number five. Number five. All right. How many songs you record a night? Twelve. Twelve songs a night. That's all we're gonna put on the EP. Twelve. I'm gonna do my all. So you're gonna do it all one night. All in one night. All right. All right. You done? As long as it ain't trash. It ain't gonna be trash. But are we gonna what are we, are we calling what are we calling it? Trash gangster grill. Trash gangster grill. Yeah. That's that's kind of a setup. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> okay. All right. It's gonna be it's gonna be some fire shit. We're right, cool. we, we gonna sell a million copies. All right. You We're know gonna lose my fucking mind. Yeah, gangster bro gangster girls ain't cheap these days, neither. Oh, oh wow. You that nigga drum out it, it shouldn't be cheap. But yeah, you rich though, so I'm you gonna be broke doing motherfucker. I'm be saying that. I'm <laughs> broke doing a motherfucker. I know what these YouTube numbers look like. I ain't doing a me me that that. But besides the album dropping <laughs> March 17th. Uh March 17th. March 17th. What else you got coming, bro? What else uh, can you expect from you? I'm working on a project. I'm working on a, a gangster girls podcast. Oh, oh. Um, so oh. be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm in the process of of doing a book deal. Okay. Um, some soundtracks, Generation Now compilation, new music from Lil Uzi Vert, okay. new music from Jack Harlow. Um, Pusha T, Gangsta Grills. Ooh, ooh. Yo, ooh. you said you said that. Um, I just want to rock is the new anthem from Philly. What's up with that? I said what I said was I just want to rock was the new anthem for this year um and my statement went pretty viral yes fast. and people yeah. started like you know it started an uproar between dreams and nightmares and i just want to rock and i wasn't in no way trying to take discredit for what the type of record dreams and nightmares was and you know the longevity that the record had and everything i was just saying you know vert you know he, he has a hot record out right now um, he do he do yeah, and he's also also my artist. You know what I'm saying? Sign a generation now. So of course I'm a I'm gonna wave that flag. You know what I mean? But, but but it's you know it's all Philly. It's all love. You know Meek and Uz, Vert. You know those guys are you know uh, are, are close, and I got relationships with both of them. So by no means did I did I mean to to, to start any trash talk. <laughs> you know it just it, is what it, it is. took a mind of its own. Yeah, yeah, it's live. We just want to thank you for stopping by Trash. Nah, thanks for having me. Blessing seeing you, man. Absolutely, you doing what you're doing. We definitely going to work on that comedy. Uh, for sure. Gangsta Grill, for sure. Nah, that shit been some time. Give it up for drum, everybody. Yeah! Did y'all enjoy today's show or what? Yeah! 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 Drama had some key points, didn't he? Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Drama, he came with the heat and stuff, man. He made sure he came and talked that trash. Trash, trash, gangsters grill. Oh, you coming gonna do it? soon. You gonna do it? Gonna do it.
right. That's right. You better do it. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. If you want to come and be part of the trash talk show, you want to come and be a part of the live audience, there's some things you have to do. Like these little old things right below or maybe up here. You click on the link, hit the email, and come and be a part of the trash talk show. If not, y'all trash. 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 You know what I mean? So for us, it was about us representing the best of us. We grew up here in Atlanta, the home of King. We couldn't do nothing but represent what he represented. And that's righteousness. And that's throughout the music. And that's the reason why our music has lasted longer than everybody else in the area. You know? The Dungeon family is the only family in music that's still together and we all alive. That's the best. And give it up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.